So today we're going to make keyholes, and I'll tell you the kind of the origin of this. Um, I was with, I think, Hani. I don't know if Lady was there. We were doing a program. It could have been uh, just a coffee and whatever at Kibble, and talking mm -hmm. about um, what else did you talk about? Food and what they got on sale. So um, talking about food, and somebody mentioned, why can't you get keyholes anywhere? And so. I said, I'll find a recipe and make them. So I found a recipe and I was going to make them and bring them over to her and then COVID hit and then, you know, the rest of the story. So that's how this originated. Um, I was doing them, you know, I was doing all the Zoom classes during COVID and now I'm here in person and I thought, what fun would it be for a baked good that's really old world that I don't know if you can find here in town anymore. It's, it's a little bit of work. It's a little bit of work, as you'll see, and it's a lot of time involved. So um, I will tell you that, and the recipe is simple, easy. These are your ingredients. I weighed everything out. Um, you have to mix the dough for 20 minutes, and then it has to sit for a half hour. So I made a batch of dough that's sitting and waiting. Uh, the mixing of it is for 20 minutes is to aerate it, because, um, and I have, because I was here yesterday and baked with my sous chef pinky. <laughs> and, um, and, and so the reason why you beat it for 20 minutes is to aerate it, to get the glutens going, to get everything, because there's, there, there's a half a teaspoon of baking powder in it that's the only rising agent. And it's really the hot air in the oven that will make it puff up and the eggs. And you want to get the eggs. So we beat the eggs first, and then it has to sit for a half hour to rest. And then we'll move on. So the first thing we're gonna do is put liquid ingredients into the bowl. It's three eggs and one egg yolk. And um, I never know what to do with extra egg yolks, but it dawned on me this week because I have extra yolk for yesterday's batch and extra yolk for this and it. Is it yolk or white? I'm sorry, white. That's Thank you, Ethel. Thank you, Ethel. We Thank make meringues with egg whites. Well, I don't make meringues. I'm not well, a I meringue do. fan. Yes. So, pavlova. Mm. Well, I have a holla business. Not worried about eggs for my holla. That will make my hollas nice and shiny. So we have where I bake hollas. Oh, um, I really bake for big parties. I bake for, uh, I don't sell them individually. That's, that's it. I think I work for a party, plan. I don't work for. I work with a party planner. She uses me for all her hollas, for the big five pound ceremonial hollas and smaller ones, holla rolls. And I also work with the caterer at um, Temple Beth Israel. So I, I do. Um, I'll put my thoughts on in a second. So three eggs and an egg yolk, a third of a cup of oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. I think oil is oil, except for olive oil or any of the flavored oils. So if a recipe calls for canola oil or sunflower oil, you're fine just to use any kind of oil as long as it's not a flavored oil. And a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. So that's gonna go in there. We're going to my nice quiet. And you can see it on the screen, so it's a lot easier. Our technical advisor, Rabbi Levy, has set everything up perfectly. And we're going to go, except no electricity. <laughs> it's, it's on. Power cord on? The power cord is on. And now? Yep. Oh, I might check the one on the floor. No, no, it's on. The light is, what's that lit up? And that is your thing? I don't know. It could be even, it's supposed to be green. Oh, great. Oh, that was straight. Oh, yeah. Just. Good job, Mark. You went the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get that and beat that to about a minute. Isn't how quiet it is? Isn't it lovely? How did you know the difference? Um, I read reviews. I am on a wonderful Facebook group called 
Hala, H O L L A for Hala, Hala for Hala from all around the world. And there's some wonderful uh, recipes, and people post photos, and and everybody there's baking tips, and there's mixer tips. And so whenever anyone needs a new mixer or a new something, they just go to the Hala group and say, "What do you use for such and such?" You get 147 responses. <laughs> And what I do is the responses, you know, if I get the majority are for the KitchenAid commercial. But yes, it's so nice and quiet, isn't it? It's perfect. So that's your wet ingredients. In your dry ingredients are a cup and a half of flour. I, I use King Arthur flour for everything, all purpose flour, a cup and a half of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of baking powder and two teaspoons of sugar. The sugar comes in when you roll it out because you it, it's coated in sugar. So we've got those um, really nice. The recipe says add this in in three additions. You can see, yes. And we'll get that going. Get that mixed up, and you're going to see, and it gets really, really sticky. And that's what you want. It doesn't. It, it's it's a very heavy batter. It's not a cookie dough batter. It's a really heavy kind of batter. And it helps just for a time saver to put all your ingredients together and mix them up. They mix better in your dough. Rather than putting each thing individually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Yeah. See, you learn something every day. Yeah, sometimes you can taste the salt, which didn't mix in if you're eating a cookie or something like that. So, where do we get all these lovely the containers? Smart and final. Smart and final. We're going to let that incorporate a little bit more. And we're going to let it go. I always work with gloves. Um, and it's not a COVID thing. It's just I always work with gloves. I want to keep my hands clean all the time. Um, I don't want to be washing my hands every four minutes because they get really, really dry. So I always work with gloves. <laughs> See, it starts to incorporate. I'm going to just scrape it down a little bit. And then we're going to let this go. I'm going to set the timer on my phone. And we're going to let this go for 20 minutes. And we're not on high, like on no, low. on low. Yep. Yep. On, on this one, it's on two. On your one at home, if you have a KitchenAid at home, probably a four would be fine. And then it's just, you'll see how it's kind of sticky. It'll change color a little bit, it'll get thicker as it goes. We're going to let that go to the timer. Yeah, we're going to let that go for 20 minutes. Um, there we go. Right, okay. So I'm going to put on another glove. Unless you want to, here we go. We have for you to taste. And then, while well, that's going for the 20 minutes, another half hour, I know that um, we had some really interesting conversation yesterday when I was here. And um, Pinky said, well, I, I don't know if you can tell by the accent, Pinky's from South Africa. She says, we eat kiffles with herring. Herring, and then, one uh, rabbi, one of Rabbi's brothers said, yeah, we eat kiffles with herring. I never heard of it in my life. We had it with tea, thank you very much. So just yeah, want to know. We don't eat with herring, it comes onto the table. Oh, you don't eat it. No, but it's with tea. It's with tea, it's a dessert. Yes, it's a good little cracker. You have a bottle of water to help you wash it down. There's also, we have a hand washing room out the door to the left if you wanted some coffee there's coffee set up in there but um or yes 
Everything with smile on seniors has a smile attached. You know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, as for the record, on the Wikipedia page, like when you search kibble, it yes. says in South Africa oh, they eat it with herring. <laughs> it does it not really say, say that. that. It brought, say, no, it says it that. Really that's what did you hysterical. say? On Wikipedia, it says in South Africa, they eat simple with herring. Exactly. I told you. Yeah. Maybe Pinky edited last night. It's because you can edit. You can, yeah. yeah. And you don't have to own them. And then it said in another place, they call it nothing because it's like technically airy inside. Yes, very airy inside. No, this yes. is exactly like New York when I tasted right. it earlier. It's like, this is exactly what you get in New York. Does anyone want right. one? And we made these a little smaller. There might be some bigger ones in there. Now, I will say that um, on the recipe, it says to make them one by two inch rectangles. It's so small and it makes so many and you could be twisting forever and life is too short. So I we've been making them bigger. Um, the one thing we'll use is you see is a pizza cutter. Um, it, it makes it really, really easy to slice. But I was wondering what your experience was with Kiho, if, if you're East Coast, if you're Midwest, if you're West Coast. Oh, okay. In their area. Uh huh. Yeah. Mostly like air. We had, we, uh, just as, as we had a little, we had an oven problem yesterday. One of the reasons why I did yesterday was to just see which ovens were going to work the best. So Rabbi brought this one from home. And best um, oven. That was excellent. It's one a of the time for you to know you can buy them. Not this one, but Costco? you can go to Costco and buy it. Costco, okay. Oh, lovely, Judy. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, you told me that at lunch last week. Yes. Hello. 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 Yes, speaking. Hi, Tom. This is Jesse calling from Farm Provision. Yes. I see that you wanted the outside. Could you turn off your phone? Who is it? Somebody's not on mute. It's not on mute. Nice one, and you split it in the middle, and you put the left piece through the middle. Oh, that way. So just quickly in South Africa. Another piece? No, but I just got a text from Sandy Bondi. She said, please stay in the shuffle. There'll be plenty. Sure, thank you. Want another one? Perfect. We we have a review on the pickles. Oh, how are they? Great review on the pickles. My husband loved them. Really? What the pickles? The pickles. Yeah, oh, they're delicious. Things. So while that's mixing, and you, I don't know if you can see on there how the consistency of the dough has changed somewhat. It's it's stickier, it's clear, it's almost like a, a taffy, and it's 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 kind of sticky and it's it's fine. So can I say something about Absolutely. So I just want to tell you in South Africa the way we used to make it. I forget the ingredients. But we put it through a pasta machine. So as it came out in these long sheets of, of dough, you would cut it like in a rectangle, brush it with oil, sugar it, turn it over, brush it with oil, sugar, and bake it on um, like a cooling rack so that the air would get through it. 
and they were paper, paper, paper thin. Delicious and with lots of sugar. As a proof today here in America, we've used tortilla chips, tortilla, tortillas, we've used one pound skins to crib it because nobody really wants to stand there making it like we used to. So that's just the South African way. So bon appetit and enjoy Benita. So my mother-in-law, who um, was Polish, Polish, made those and called them bubbles. She would fry them and put powdered sugar on them, yeah, and she would call them bubbles. Okay. So would you be able to hear me over this yeah. as I do it? Okay. So we're going to get the, I, I have dough that's been sitting. I also, because I'm not a cleaner upper, if you <laughs> know from my uh, my Zoom baking, I like less work for mother is my motto. And so the more I can do to not have to clean up, the better. So I'm going to um, roll this on parchment paper and I'm going to put parchment paper on top. It keeps everything clean. There's a lot of sugar that's going to go around and rather than clean it up, I'll be cleaning up probably around the edges, but it's a much cleaner way to work. So that's what I do. You know what? Yes, Rabbi, Rabbi if you can don't you, mind. Can you put this on to preheat for us? To and what I couldn't get piece? done yesterday was the timer off. And so I think it's it's set for 30 minutes and that's fine because we're going to watch them. But if you could set it for us, thank you. 350? So All here's right. your dough. It's been sitting around for a half hour. It mixed. Oh, you know what? We're gonna, oh, I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need the plastic to cover that. Hello. How are you? We have a visitor. Yes, we do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pour some sugar out. You want to really get this cake with sugar. The recipe says three quarters of a cup. It's not specific, it's just, just a suggestion. You'll use less, you'll use, use more. Really kind of depends. And always, 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 when you make dough, anything with flour, any kind of dough, a, a cake, a cookie, whatever, it depends on the temperature in the room that you're using and it depends on the temperature and the humidity outside. Every day will turn out a little bit different. Sometimes when I bake these, they'll come out really nice and puffy. And I've made them at home because I've tried them a couple of times. And, you know, my, my husband and Pinky, the taste testers. <laughs> um, and, and so it really depends on the day. So I'm going to put it into the sugar. And do that. I'm going to pour some more sugar on top. Kind of massage it in a little bit. If you remember when I used a rolling pin before and had a specific, I have um, little rubber spacers at the ends so that the recipe says do it to a quarter inch. This is a quarter inch. It's always, I, I don't know a quarter inch from three quarters or, or four inches. So now I know that when this is on the table, this space in between here is the quarter inch and that's the height that I want. That I want. Um, they're rubber. Are they specific no, because they stretch. This happens to be they stretch because they're rubber. Comes in a package of I think there's six Four different five. sizes. Five. So they're hard to get on and off. They are hard to get on and off. Now this happens to be a Chabad rolling pin, and thank you. This happens to be a Chabad rolling pin, and it's perfect. Chabad rolling pins are very expensive, <laughs> <laughs> and they're a blessing. <laughs> I, I, I bought them at Sherwood Top. You probably have them in the bed there. And you know where else you might find an ABC baking? Okay. Oh, ABC, ABC, ABC cake or something? Is something is ABC ABC Indian Street. Street. Oh, and Street. And Indian Street. 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 Between 28th and 30th Street. Cross from the Sprouts over there. Okay. So I'm going to keep checking it as I roll it because I really want the sugar. It's the sugar that cracks and gives it its look and gives it its sweetness because as you see, there's two teaspoons of sugar inside, so it's not a sweet cracker. So we're just going to roll. 
until my my trusty bands tell me that we're at a quarter of an inch. It says to roll in a um, rectangle. It snaps back. If you see, every time I roll it, it comes out to there and then it snaps back. So it's a good arm exercise. I'm going to, and that's also a way to keep the sugar in here and keep the sugar on the sides. And it's just a lot cleaner and a lot easier. Yes. Right. Parchment right. paper is the best thing to bake. Right. With. The best. And of course, I buy parchment paper in my boxes of a thousand. And she buys it really tough. Pardon. Uh, and I bought, yeah, and they're already the sheets. Cups. They're thousand um, sheets. They come in sheets. It's so much easier. And it doesn't curl. And I've got boxes of rolled ones from Costco. Now I'm, yeah. I learn every day something new ah. from this one. I thought I was the maven, but I'm not. Yeah. So I want to make sure that the other side is nice and flat as well. Really looking good. And as you see, there's nothing to mixing it. It's just time consuming. And because you're doing this for 20 minutes, and then you're letting it sit for a half hour. So, and if you let it sit for longer than a half hour, I'm sure it will be fine. So if you went out and you did errands and... Exactly. Exactly. So that it has an opportunity to rise. So I think that's good. Nice and flat, it's nice and sugary. I'm going to roll it one more time. Snap back. Okay, so if you want to straighten it out, you can and make your ends even so that you can get some nice even pieces. You can twist those. I'm going to start here. I'm going to eyeball it for about an inch in width. They're going to be a little fatter. And so as long as they're rectangle shapes, you'll have a great bow tie. That was a little small. And so what you do, and you see the line in there, and when it bakes up, that's going to um, uh, spread out. And just take it and twist it one time, just like a bow tie, and lie it down. Now, I'm not sure on the recipe if it says to grease your pan, but because I'm doing this, That was my time. Oh no, that wasn't my time. No, that was the other Ah, I thought my timer. I'm going to just get it going a little bit more. And that's really it. That's all there is to it. We're going to bake it. Um, the key is in the baking. I have to say that it can go from perfect to burnt real fast. So use your other light. Um, keep your eye on it after 20 minutes. It should be fine for the first 20 minutes. There we go. So those and the cigars. 
that one a little more. <laughs> that one a little more. Do it a heart twist so it, it, it looks like a bow in the center. A harder twist. Putting more on the How long? No. How long is it in the oven? It's in the oven 20 to 30 minutes. Absolutely check it after 30 minutes, after 20 minutes. Wait a sec. I'm just twisting them a little more. It's a harder twist. Yep. Okay. And then is the timer set on that? Okay, excellent. I the reason why we wanted it is because one, two, and both sides, two half sides can't. Meaning this doesn't hold both hands. Pardon? You're going to have to use this. Yes, yes, yes. On the bottom, one on top, one on bottom. Uh huh. Now it's that one minute and 45 seconds. Yeah. 350 per. Start at 20. Some of these are going to be really funny looking cakes because they're going to taste delicious. And once you take one bite, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Question, what would happen if you just left it straight and you didn't twist it? You know what? Probably the you same know, if you just left thing it like and then that. you just broke it, I'm sure. We're going to leave this one like that. I want to see what happens. Sure. I can't hear you, Mrs. Reedy. Sorry. <laughs> it was flat like this. Did you Google it? You Google no, we didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I thought I was going to look on a website like what's a bakery there? I'll look on their website. Okay. It's also not twisted. Oh, that by the way, you could. You can, I just read this on that Wikipedia. You can substitute with matzo meal for Passover and we have Passover. Yeah. So it looks flat like this. Yeah, no, I'm saying that. I just I read that. So I Oh, and it's not as rich. This is a richer dough. Richer. Uh huh. If you wanted to make a big circle, I don't think. I think it's absolutely experiment with it. Excuse me. I think that it's it's the dough. This one actually, because I mixed it out here instead of in there, and it's a little stickier, which is also fine, it's, isn't it? It is. And it also lets me know that it will probably, these will probably bake up a little up here. So I'm just gonna, so you can see it's really sticky. I'm gonna just use the spatula to kind of gather in the ball at the bottom. So everything's all together. And this will sit for another half hour. Are we still on? We're still on, but I have no clue where you are. <laughs> you have no clue where? On the picture. On the screen. Oh, that's hysterical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you lost us. You have to wet yourself there. It's another reason to wear gloves. It's nice and sticky, and your hands stay nice and clean. If it's too sticky, do you put in more no, you know what? If it's real sticky, when you get it out on the sugar, the sugar's the going to absorb. Sticky. Absolutely. I wouldn't put any more flour in. Yeah. And it can tend to make it cakey or yeah. cookie-y. And what you want is that light, crunchy, kind of honeycomb um, dryness inside. So there we go with that. I don't I know. The timer. Pardon? The timer. Uh, the seven yeah, well, this is... We'll wait a half hour. So, no, for this, but an hour. Yeah, about a half hour. So, in a so, half hour, it rises or it doesn't rise? It really doesn't rise. It just has an opportunity to sit because you've been beating for 20 minutes. So, it gets all the glutens going and everything comes alive within the flour. And then it sits and it settles. It has to relax the gluten. Yes. Otherwise, and the, you wouldn't be able to roll it. Right. And you have to rest it down. So that's what that is. So I who's gonna try it at home? I'll try my granddaughter. Yeah, for sure. My granddaughter. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, it's so nice, I think, to 
um, be able to have something that is old world or something that you're used to and that they don't make here anymore, especially here where I don't think there's a Jewish bakery in town anymore. And so getting anything is really um, not an option. So, yeah. And I, I don't really want to make the most awesome babka. I nice. Her babka. Oh, very nice. It's the best babka we have ever had. Excellent. Really? Oh, Excellent. His neighbor. His neighbor. Uh -huh. let, me, let me go get the booklet so we can see what it is. I'll be right back. Or, oh, and Miriam's doing it? Yeah. yeah that's terrific. Is it January? Did you ever make a paper? No, but my oh, 